Hello, this is Iris. How you doing? <clears throat> well, this video is for uh, people who uh, want to know who I am. Um, first of all, I came here to this place. being sent from paradise and yes I remember I remember before creation setting up the souls of peace I remember setting up all sorts of things to influence the destiny of humanity and creation before creation so, you can read the part yourself about uh, the incarnation of Cyrus. It's on the website www.magisterialmission.net. I want you to know that I'm here. But uh, I didn't actually know anything about the Urantia book or the teaching mission, nor was I involved in the New Age movement before <laughs> it became evident who I was and by the fruit that I bore, what I had come to do to adjudicate. So, let's start at the adjudication. One year prior to the adjudication, which started on 12 midnight, 2012. There was a apocalyptic event that many people actually started talking about and saying, oh, the apocalypse has started. <laughs> this is the beginning of the end. <laughs> At 12 midnight on 2011, suddenly, Thousands upon thousands of birds came falling out of the sky dead in baby Arkansas. And I said to my friend, he goes, isn't that weird? And I said to my friend, if you think that's weird, the same thing's going to happen one year later at the exact time in the same place. And he said, no, that'll never happen. Well, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and that exact moment... One year later, at 12 midnight, the adjudication began. And how did it begin? Leviathan is terminal. <laughs> I just started up. <laughs> and I started reading out all the things that had been adjudicated. And all the angels and celestials that were going to have their sentence read in their execution their sentence their execution and this went on for a long period of time we're talking you know i was actually doing it in uh, in a cosmic language as well but i understood completely what i was saying and i knew exactly all the names of the angels that were involved what their crimes were what their sentence was and exactly what I was going to do with them <clears throat> and how it was going to happen. And I was speaking it out. And it went on for a long period of time. We're talking like almost 40 days, 40 days and nights, nonstop in cosmic language. The crimes, Leviathan is terminal, uh, Baal is terminal, uh, all sorts of different sins and iniquities that took humanity down the wrong track. So the adjudication was more about angels than about humanity. The adjudication of the Lucifer Rebellion. So this went on for a long period of time. We're talking like 40 days and nights and during that period of time I actually I have a friend named 
James, who has a twin brother named John. <laughs> it's very strange because when somebody is resurrected and sent back, oftentimes their names are switched around. So he has a twin brother named John, and he's James. Like the Apostle John who wrote the book of Revelation. In fact, James is the Apostle John who wrote the book of Revelation. And he actually was so friendly with me that I actually was telling him what I was doing. And I had him stay with me through the night one night while I was adjudicating. So he saw the white chair with a rainbow light behind it, just like he did when he saw it in the book of Revelation. He needed to be here during the time that it was happening. So God sent him back to do that. And he was here while I was adjudicating, just like in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> so that's that's a little tickle for you there. <laughs> but anyway, I still I still knew nothing. Once the adjudication was over on about uh February 17th or 18th, 2012. Um, then I started looking around for people who were waiting for me or look around for information about what actually, you know, I had no idea about any of these things. I knew that I had been sent from paradise. I knew that I had to adjudicate. But I didn't know that there was anybody who would reference it until I read something about the teaching mission. So I started reading about the teaching mission and I heard about this character named Mon Ronson, which is weird because Magisterial of Nevadon, they take the first letters of those words and you've got Mo, um, Magisterial of Nevadon, Juridical Order, yes, Mojo. Manjo, and the last three letters of my first name and my last name are Ronson. So there's the clue right there. And I tried to uh, share this with somebody. <laughs> I was quite astounded because all these channelings that I, you know, that I was reading actually had a lot to do with what I knew I had come to do. So I was like, well, these people must be waiting for me. So, of course, I announced myself, and I announced myself to the wrong person. <laughs> he didn't believe me. So then, actually, I started reading the uh, Urantia book, and the Urantia book, I expected completely that the Urantia book would be completely off kilter, that there would be no way that it would ever, ever be anything that was from God. And I read the entire thing and found out that it was astoundingly perfect, because all the things that I knew coming from paradise were all the things that were referred to including the adjudication and the Avenal son those are things that I didn't even know about until after I had already started fulfilling the duties of my incarnation and I didn't know anything about any of those things it's not like I was sitting there thinking well you know I've been reading these things for so long I'm a typical delusional right no I'm not a delusional at all <laughs> I never had any knowledge of these things until after they'd already taken place. So anyway, um, so I read all this stuff and I'm like, okay, now I know exactly who I am. And it was very cathartic to me because I could actually like, I knew exactly where I was, what I was doing and why. And I knew exactly how to deal with it all and not lose my mind, which was a wonderful thing. And it was a wonderful gift of my father to make sure that I had all those things. And now um, Caligasti and Lucifer are dead because during the adjudication, they started giving me lip. And when they're speaking, they speak in this weird uh, language that goes right through you like magnetic waves. So I was like, Father, what should I do with these? <laughs> You can understand what they're saying, but 
they go through you as if they were magnetic waves. It's like a, a chiming sound. Uh, it's like a magnetic vocal sound. So I said, uh, what should I do? You know, they're, they're like raging at me like a storm. I knew exactly what they were saying. I could tell what they were saying. But uh, it was not a normal language. <laughs> and he said, still the storm. So I said, okay, be still. And they stopped. And I said, we've heard far too much from you for far too long. Now, if you haven't written all these things down for my benefit to read later, after you've been executed, you made a mistake. <laughs> and I said, I said who they were. I, I, I said who it was that I was speaking to. And I proclaimed the sentence. And it was termination. So after I said the word termination, I always had to blow. Uh, and I went. <laughs> and they were they were gone. <clears throat> Sent to their destiny. Anyway, um, it sounds awfully. Uh, it sounds awfully uh, simple, doesn't it? To. Blow away. The rebellion with your breath but that's exactly how it was set up so um, once I found out about the teaching mission I kind of got fascinated by it for a while I never actually uh, channeled or anything like that but I realized that there were so many people that were abusing other people's consciousnesses and uh, making claims that were never going to happen about calamities and appearances of the avenal son the magisterial son um, saying things that i never ever would say and saying things that michael would never ever say and saying things that the father would never ever say or Mac Aventa would ever, ever say. And I knew exactly how all of it was going to play out. Which was disconcerting because I knew, I knew that they weren't telling the truth. <clears throat> so when I uh, introduced myself to this certain gentleman who owns uh, Sarara.com, I believe, he became my mortal enemy which is interesting and he is still slandering me which I think is a tremendous compliment because of the calamities that he ensues with just almost every word he says I'm glad that he does not believe me because if he did that would be worse for me than if he did believe that would, than if he didn't believe <clears throat> I actually don't want him to believe because I don't trust him and I think there's a lot of people that don't trust him. <laughs> so <laughs> who am I really seriously trying to find? Well, I can tell you for sure I found John the Baptist. John the Baptist actually verified my my uh, mission and my status just the way that he did for Joshua but Joseph uh, and I knew he was going to come at a certain day and he came on that day and he proclaimed it exactly the way he was supposed to and I said um, we had this little conversation he said uh, well here's one thing that I have to say to you to verify your identity and I said well what is it and he said here's a little mystery for you John the Baptist was in prison, and uh, he was going to be executed. But he sent a messenger to Jesus that said, <clears throat> Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? And he said, uh, and I said, well, first of all, John. I said, first of all, you're either John or Jesus, because this is my favorite scripture. But go ahead. 
<laughs> so then, he, you know, he went through the whole scripture where uh, Jesus replies to the messenger, well, tell John that um, the, uh, the dead are raised, the, the deaf hear, the blind see, uh, the mute tongue is speaking, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. So he sent that message back, plus he added this part. Blessed is he, John, who does not stumble on account of me. And uh, the man who I know is John the Baptist hadn't admitted that he was John the Baptist. I said, well, like I said, you're only asking this question because you're either John the Baptist or Jesus. He hadn't even admitted this to me. I knew right away that he was John the Baptist or Jesus. <laughs> so then he goes, okay. He kind of just kept quiet about it. And I'm like, um, what is it? He said, what does it mean? I said, oh, first of all, both Jesus and John the Baptist were waiting for someone else. And I said, they were waiting for Cyrus because Cyrus was foretold in the book of Isaiah and they both knew that. I said, here I am. They were both waiting for someone else. When Jesus was speaking about the Son of Man that came in the future that would come to judge the world, he said, I myself do not judge, but there is one coming who will judge, and his judgment is just because he is the Son of Man. He was talking about the Son of Man in the future that would come the magisterial son the paradise avenal son <clears throat> so john the baptist actually verified my identity and not somebody else so you can speak to john the baptist there's other people that actually do believe it as well and i am not delusional i just want you to know this is for uh, the crowd that doesn't necessarily like the teaching mission, that might be your ranch book reader, that actually does understand that there is going to be a magisterial son that does come and adjudicate the Lucifer Rebellion. And yes, I did go to Selvington, and I received my new name. And yes, I did have interaction with a group of fine uh, group of uh, beings that were going off to Havona they came into my room as a thousand points of little tiny light and went straight into my body and I started floating off the bed and it was the most overwhelming the loving and beautiful thing uh, then I actually went to Uversa, to the court of the Ancients of, da Ancient of Days, and spoke to them for about an hour, and also heard the dismissal of Gabriel versus Lucifer from the three Ancients of Days. And I can describe to you what the Ancients of Days look like. They're three gentlemen who are dressed in unbelievably ornate clothing. Uh, in this great big gothic, it looks like a gothic hall, it's overwhelming. <laughs> They're up on a raised platform, and I was standing at the bar. But I appeared on Uversa in spirit form. <laughs> because when I looked down at myself, I couldn't see myself. <clears throat> So what I'm saying is that <laughs> I'm following the bestowals of Christ Michael, the way that he set them down. <laughs> it's exactly the way that it is. So anyway, um, 
whether you believe me or not is is beside the point because all of these things have been done uh there is no doubt in my mind uh that regardless of whether anyone ever believes the only thing that's really important is for me to find the people that I'm supposed to find and do the things that I'm supposed to do and I'm finding them and I'm doing them so it would be nice if I could actually speak to someone in the Urantia book uh, community in Chicago or if I could speak to uh, someone who actually you know like Byron um, Byron Belisos or whatever his name is uh, I actually respect him and I saw this video with this uh, anti-teaching mission it was like <laughs> the first guy that talked it was like a forum they were talking about whether you know the teaching mission was uh, a valid thing or whether you should be a hardcore your rancher book person or whatever this uh, guy with glasses I, I agreed with him more the one that was hardcore your rancher book he was talking about the adjudication and it's exactly the way that it happened he's explaining it exactly the way that it happened because that's the way it was explained in the book what makes us think that God is going to do anything different than what he's done in the past <laughs> it's exactly how he does it even down to incarnating magisterial sons even down to dealing with the rebellion and the angels and humanity the effects of humanity uh, embracing the intentional sin of rebellion I would like to speak to him too because uh, I think that he would be very interesting to talk to so if any of those people want to talk to me or if any any other people want to talk to me and not just outright reject what I'm saying because I have a lot more to reveal than just that I've been working on behalf of uh, reassigning celestials as well, um, as well as working on behalf of restitution and recompense and reworking of places where genocide has happened and dealing with survivors of genocide and representatives of certain countries who are trying so hard to get things right finally even governments, scientists. These things are done in the spirit, via mind, via the thought of justice. And I also can travel um, interdimensionally. And I know Makovent and Mekizedek, by the way. <laughs> He's visible to me, just the way that Caligastia was vis visible to me. I also went to the Father's Detention Sphere and released a few of the uh, rebels that had been reformed. They came to me one night and said, we believe that you are the Lord Cyrus, the Messiah, and we would like to come to you. And I said, well, I don't know if you can come to me, but I'll come to you. So immediately I went into a trance and I, and I went through uh, a portal into the father's detention sphere and went and spent an entire day with them and I brought a few of them back because they were essential to uh, finalizing things so there's only two people who've actually went to the places where the rebels were interned and one of them is Michael and one of them is me um, we're the only two who are, have enough authority to go to these beings that have been in turn one thing I can tell you for sure it does say in the Bible that uh, they can hear the voice of the Son of God I spent a lot of time talking and ministry to them 
and they could hear my voice. And when I got to the Father's detention sphere, I heard them shout, Gloria in excelsis Deo. They went through that whole Latin phrase. <laughs> I heard them say that. Um, Bless is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That they were tired of being in detention. That they had reformed and that they wanted to be released. And I released them. But there's a few of them that I did not release. And I still, <laughs> I still ministered to them for quite a while before they decided to lay their lives down. So that's the whole story of that. After the adjudication, I went on for about a three-year period, working in the spirit, reassigning celestial beings, uh, working with energy and matter, stabilizing the planet, changing political systems, influencing empowering humanity to do what is right and giving them guidance and cohesiveness in oneness because the kingdom of God is within and it's not for one nation or race or people or religion it's the Hindus the Buddhists the Islam the Christians the Jews it's all of us even the pagans even the atheists, even the materialists. <laughs> because God knows his children and he brings them to himself. And that's what I'm here to do, is make sure that that's so. And I've committed myself to stay here as long as I possibly can. I'm not trying to assume control or exalt myself. I only want to meet the people that I'm supposed to meet and do the things that I'm supposed to do. And I'm perfectly willing to be a teacher or a companion or a friend or an inspiration to whoever is willing to be kind to me and learn from me. And that's what I'll have to say. Thank you. Get a hold of me. I have a lot more writings too in case you need them. I can give them to you. Uh, the email address is magisterialmission at gmail.com. The website address? <laughs> www.magisterialmission.net Don't believe all the things that people say on those terrible websites like Sarara about Cyrus. They call him I Cyrus. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. No. I'm a sheep in wolf's clothing. I huff and I puff and I blow your house in. <laughs> Leviathan is terminal. Ha! <laughs> The rebels were not happy to hear my voice and to have me blow them away. And I wasn't happy to do it. But it needed to be done. So that's it. May you be blessed of God.